Saddam Hussein overrated or underrated? He's Whoa. just, he's just <laughs> they always go condemn. on TV when Aiden's like, do you condemn terrorism? It's like, duh. Right. <laughs> Habibi. Habibi can be fe- female, uh, female, female and male. Female. <laughs> That's his gender. I'm, I'm, female. I'm a female. <laughs> so even though I am Arab, Middle Eastern, Hollywood's perception. This guy opens the leg with that. I'm <laughs> thirsty, bro. Okay, like, wait, like, wait. We are not against Jewish people whatsoever. We love Jewish people. Say Our friends again. are Jewish. We're literally cousins. It's the government, man. What we have yeah. a problem with is, is the government and the political movement who, whose objective is to eradicate the existence of Palestinians in Palestine. I see it at the gym. Fuck. I actually look Fuck. at, I don't even look at women. I look at men. Every time that a woman is abused, it is 100% the fault of the man that carried out the abuse. Shakira, Shakira. I have her signature on a napkin, and she kissed Legend. it. She kissed it? It's framed. Can I borrow that napkin? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> 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 and I've, And we just got demonetized, baby. Banger. Habibi House. How did we come with the name Habibi House? Ah, um, yeah. So why did we do this podcast? Like, because you guys I, know I think it's six going, Arabic words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's one the only them. Arabic word I know. <laughs> well, I know uh, a lot of Arabic words, but I think that America and the world doesn't know too many Arabic words, right? They know hummus. They don't know how to say it though. They know Habibi, which means my love. They, you know, what else do they know? Yalla, which means come on, and Allahu Akbar, which means. God I'm gonna is bl- the greatest. Oh, oh, it doesn't it mean I'm gonna God blow is everything the greatest up. Greatest is what it means. Oh, it, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's so all that means. So the media has made well, it even seem, saying the word Allah has that connotation that it's it's like it's just God. In yeah, Arabic. it's just literally just God in Arabic, but so it has that connotation that, that it it's gonna be like you know fundamentalist. The reason why we do this podcast is to bring clarify. light to these kind of yeah. things, and that's why. You guys know I was against the name of the podcast being Habibi House initially because to me it's like the low hanging fruit. It's like the the standard slap it on, make it Arab word. You know what I'm well, saying? Well, you wanted it like time, but spelled T H Y M E. Initially, I really wanted goat talk, like because we're. But isn't know, that even more that's stereotypical? So we were, that's a bad stereotype. It's stereotypical, Habibi but is at like least Habibi, you know? it's stereotypical, but at no. least it's not like your standard. Um, we would get so roasted general. by that name, bro. Yeah, goat talk, bro. Goat talk was was fine. Hey, comment, we, comment. Know. Is Habibi House better or goat talk? We're goats. First of all, we're, we're goats Who's, in our own right. We're the greatest of all time in our own but profession. But what are we also called? And then we're also goats, you know, because Arab. We should just say goat camel what? talk at that point. No, I mean, goat talk has a, is a double entendre. There's more camels in the state fair in Florida than there is in Lebanon. Like, let's just put it that way. Can you bring up a source, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> like, you have to yeah. fit that lowest common denominator of, like, how many Arab words do people even know? Right. Right? So I think we should go out to Steve on the streets and see how many Arab words That's do you guys question. know. Cut to that segment. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your homeboy, Steve, and I'm here with my two Arab friends. You mean Arab? Bro, Shubek, it's Arab. 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 Yeah. yeah, we're going to find out Arabic words. Hey, do you guys know any Arabic words? Baba, Arabic words? No. no. You know anything in Arabic? Ar- Ach, Arabic. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Mashallah. Mashallah. Mashallah means something good from God. Do you guys know any Arabic words? Arabic? No. I not, not even one? Nope. Can I teach you one? Sure. Teach him. Habibi. Habibi. Nice. But with a ha. Ha. Habibi. Yeah. Habibi. Yeah. It means I my... Think, I, think I, I think I know that one. This is my darling, right? Yeah. We're here with the Habibis. You guys know any Arabic words? Habibi. I know Habibi. Habibi means my my love. Yeah. And then Sarsur. Sarsur. Yeah. How you, say, how you say love? The way you say love is hope. Oh. Yeah. It's the root of the word Habibi. Have you heard of that word? No, Habibi. Which means my love. My love. Yeah. It's a beautiful word. Yeah. Do you know any Arabic words? Assalamu alaikum. What does that mean? Hello. Hey guys, you know any Arabic words? Any what? Arabic words? No. Not at all. What? How about Arabic food? Like tabbouleh, shawarma? Oh, tabbouleh. Tabbouleh. Yeah. Yes. You guys yeah. like tabbouleh? Yes. Yeah. 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 We're about to do Ramadan and stuff like that, so yes, it's like, yes, if you guys want to welcome and fast with us, you know, you're more than welcome, so. 
What's Ramadan? That's an Arabic word. What is that? Ra Ramadan, it's a, it's, a, it's a holy month for Muslim people. Who are you guys? We're, we're doing an Arabic podcast. Habibi house. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. We're here. This is the Habibi House podcast, um, hosted by three Habibis. My name is Atif. Allegedly. Habibi 1. Habibi 1. Habibi 2. Asad. Habibi 3. And Talal. Um, we don't have names like uh, John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith. Um, is what, is, Schmidt? what does Talal mean? Uh, vantage point. A place where you look out. A lookout spot, basically. Lookout spot. Asad, what does Asad mean? Well, get the pronunciation right, bro. Asad. 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 It's Asad. pronounced Asad. It's literally impossible for Americans to say it. The eh sound. Asad? Asad? They can't say Asad? I just say it's E S S E. Yeah. Like Asad. Asad. I do have a problem with us saying each other's names. Well, yeah. you guys saying. Not gentrified. Especially saying, saying what? Saying your name's not in like the way it's supposed to be said in Arabic. How like, am I supposed to say like my you name? You call this guy Asad, bro. Asad. His yeah. name is Asad. Asad. It rhymes with more stuff when it's Asad. <laughs> it's not like Asad, Asad the Bad. When, he, when I met him, he <laughs> said, Hi, my name is Asad. <laughs> Asad. The, Which, okay, Asad, Asad means the, lion, by the way. And my name. Atif, what does it mean? Atif. What does it mean? You oh, tell me. It means like um, kind, like um, hi. How are you? Almost emotional. <laughs> hey, this I'm not emotional. Sensitive. You're a cancer, aren't you? Yeah, but chill. All right, so let's introduce ourselves. We did. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, more than that. More than just our names. What do we do? What do you do, dude? What do I do? Well, I'm a jack of all trades. I model. I act allegedly. I, I do per, I do personal <laughs> training, uh, you know. I act like my life is not falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I act like I'm okay. <laughs> Pain. I, act every day. I guess I act every day then. You're like mainly the actor. I'm mainly like the fitness guy and you're mainly the musician. And yeah. But we all kind of do that too. Um, I'm a content creator. Uh, that's like the way to introduce yourself. Influencer has like a bad rap. That's why. Because like people like look at influencers just like. Girls that show their butt on Instagram. They don't, yeah, they don't influence nothing. They just have yeah. followers. and Yeah. I think an influencer, by definition, is like someone who actually influences, like uses their platform to have an Because everyone with a platform does have the ability, the potential to influence, but not everyone does. And some, I mean, I guess everyone has an influence, but it could be a positive or a yeah. negative influence. Influence is neutral. I suppose it, it is. Yeah. I'm thinking of it in like a but positive... People, yeah, you have it as a positive way, but uh, I mean, I'm pretty influenced by you. Uh, what? what? What have I influenced you? To do? I don't think you use your influence responsibly, but you're certainly an influencer. What do you call a bee that's really nice around you? We're doing knock knock jokes. What, is, what do you call it? Happy bee. Habibi. <laughs> nice. Happy bee. Nice. Happy bee. I'll take it. All right. Um, <laughs> let's not derail this too much. You said you allegedly act. Um, what have you been in? Um, I've auditioned and I've played all these characters um, on TV, SEAL Team, Criminal Minds, did a lot of independent movies. I uh, started acting when I was like 14 nice. and uh, moved out here for college and just kept on acting. Nice. And then the pandemic happened and that's when I became not an influencer. But now, you know, the industry is opening up again and I realize like the power is really in the writing and being able to write your own stories, and that's how you really control your career, yeah. is to create your own content. How do you feel about the roles that you've been portrayed in? And like, um, Well, a lot of my roles have been the guy who you think is a terrorist, but he's not. Jeez. And yeah. um, that's better than playing the terrorist roles, I guess. It's like it's the guy. Step up. Yeah. <laughs> it's like we're, progress. We're making progress. You know, you it's know? like, the first it was all, all terrorist roles, I remember one of my first ever roles was for like some show. I'm not going to mention it because I still want to be on it. But um, they were like, you know, tell That's my... That's the most politically correct influence. Um, I'm trying to work. Politically. <laughs> so my uncle in the show like killed a federal agent and I told the feds like, I want to help my uncle kill as many federal agents as possible. Jeez. When you see my uncle, tell him I said, Allahu Akbar. Warning, this is <laughs> a... This is all props. Fabricated... No, this is a real <laughs> story. All props. This is a real a story. Movie. Yeah, well, it's a TV show. The text Loosely based on a real story. Based on true beliefs of this uh, episode. Yeah, disclaimer, this is all props. This is all Hollywood. Um, and it's then, so like, the role started to evolve a little more to, like, oh, there's one good guy, and he's the guy that helps the Americans um, fight the bad guys, right? 
So then I, you know, I played that role, like, you know, many times it was like a love interest. Because if you look at me, you know, even without the beard, I look white, right? So I don't look, I even though I am Arab, Middle Eastern, Hollywood's perception. This guy opens the <laughs> leg with that. <laughs> I'm <laughs> thirsty, bro. Okay, like, wait, like, wait. Uh, <laughs> Keep talking. Oh, he's like, made me thirsty. Bro, um, bro, bro. So right. in Hollywood, they've evolved from being just the bad guy to like there's a couple good guys and like you're one of the good ones, you know. And now it's like they're trying to erase, trying to erase that completely. Mm. Um, and I remember I went to a erase what? They're trying to erase those stereotypes um, or like the just the two dimensional characters that are all like either good or bad. Who's trying to erase? Um, like Hollywood, I think there's been in diversity initiatives. Uh, they recently introduced a new category called Middle Eastern, North African, mm. MENA, mm -hmm. and then MENASA, Middle Eastern, North African, and South Asian, which is a category they never had before. So they're they're starting to just make regular roles more diverse yeah. instead of just having all the Middle Eastern guys be bad guys for 20 years or whatever. It's typecast, right? Yeah. So do we like? Um, do we like that? Well, the combination of like, do we think Middle Eastern, North African? Is, is a better category or do we like the one where we're combined with South, Southeastern Asian people? Um, I think that it's a side note. If you want to address it now, or you can keep going with your story. I mean, well, what is South? I mean, what is South Asian? South Asian is like Pakistani, Indian, Bangladesh. Afghanistan. It's like the uh, Afghanistan. Afghanistan is almost Middle Eastern. It's like a whole Indian is Indian. Indian in, Indian and South Asian. It's like they're brown, but like Malaysian, Malaysian, Indonesian. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So I think that sometimes you have to partner up with other minorities to get a seat at the table. To become a majority. Almost. To become a majority, to become seen, really. Right. So technically we're Middle Eastern, we're Arab, but sometimes we have to be grouped with, you know, Middle Eastern, North African, and South Asian just so we have that seat or that role that's right. that's for us. And then also sometimes, you know, we have to we're Asian as well, part of the Asian continent, but you know, we're not really seen as Asian, you know, even South Asians sometimes aren't really seen as Asian. But if, you know, if the Asians, you know, who have made a name for themselves in Hollywood, bring us on, bring us them. on, bring us in like, hey, you know, we're, we're here, too, so that hopefully one day we can get our own group. Um, I mean, I agree to a certain extent, but like you're talking about over a billion people like we're we're really watering ourselves down, um, you know. We, we don't have a separate, like, entity. That's a fair point. We have to be that change, you know? There has to be... Yeah. We have to be creating our own content, and, you know, right. I love what Rami and Mo are doing, yeah. and um, they're, like, paving a path that wasn't there before. Right. That was paved by other, you know, um, minorities. Yeah. Mindy Kaling. Right. You know, stuff like that. So... Yeah, I think it's an interesting question, and I, I, I see both your perspectives, and I think it's like, yeah... One side of it is there's power in numbers and there's people that have already made waves like yeah. Indians uh, have already become more integrated in American films and other they, South. I mean, they, ha they, like, they don't even need a, a American. They have Bollywood, yeah. but we're saying like in Hollywood, in, in the context of global film, like obviously I mean, Hollywood feel, is like, the global inf you know, um, machine. We only see it for, from, the, for film. from the American perspective. but like American uh, perspective oh, is the most important perspective no, because, no, the, no, because no, the rest the, of the world, it, you know, takes... In just our media. Take it easy. I wouldn't no. say the most important perspective, but I would say it's the American culture is exported to every, path, every aspect of the world. I mean, if globe. an Indian film is only released in India, again, it's over a billion people that is what that are watching. Yeah, but right. we're not... I mean... And they can be successful in their own country and still be really well off. One hundred percent America is not the end all be all. There's not everything is not in America. There's a world outside of it, obviously. I mean, the rock, from let's it. say uh, uh, the rock has a film that flops in the States. He makes millions of dollars in Yeah, but they're not there's not gonna be um a movie from overseas that's gonna But with Netflix it's rare. With the streaming services, now it's the opposite, it's like reverse. They we can there's there's films in Scandinavia, in India Name and a all Scandinavian that. film. N name a Scandinavian film. Well he's not Scandinavian but you say that Scandinavian noir is a huge like I didn't have ac I love watching this stuff now because I have access to it. So okay. I think with the with the streaming services we can kind of s still make it and separate ourselves. But you can't say that like it's it's not the the tip of the iceberg is American media and it's the studios that are down the street from us. 
that are creating majority of the content and they're exporting it to the rest of the world. This, I, I this segment is sponsored by Liquid Death. Sponsor break. Sponsor us. Liquid Death, please. Good water. It's the best flavored water, to be honest. They Jacob even have gave me like one. The dad jokes as the flavors. Bury, Bury it alive. Bury it alive. I like it. Limb is instead of lime for the other one. I'm not sure. I like regular water. Anyway, so same. Regular water is the best beverage for okay, sure. Okay, what are you trying to say? Uh, you guys keep throwing it. Okay, it things someone at has me. to I'm keep bringing things them. back. Okay. Yeah. So conversation is whether or not combining Middle Eastern um, uh, culture in Hollywood with South South Asian culture, and I think there's the power of numbers argument, but also there is. The Maybe people like way. Mo and the people like Rami, which have done things that to me watching Rami's show was so inspiring and amazing as like a young Arab to see for the first time ever, like an actual, not almost Middle Eastern, not kind of Middle Arab, you know, like a straight up yeah. Arab speaking Arabic, showing our culture 100%, going to Egypt and then Mo to follow up to be specifically Palestinian. Right. That's like huge. we've never seen that before. And you don't and it was, have to it's like me on TV. It. You don't have to affiliate it with. It doesn't have a, to be watered yeah. down. To your point. No, I'm not because saying we watered down. I'm own. just saying you have. You know, people. We are our own, but North Africa makes sense. I know. I'm just saying that like it's slow progress. It brings right? us up. It brings us up when we align with other other cultures and other nations. And yeah, and, but we don't have that community right now, right? So it is being created, um, but you know, sometimes you have to you bundle have to up. bundle up. You know, you got to get the Hulu Disney Plus deal. Get the discount. For $15.99. Uh, sponsor us. <laughs> this guy. Sponsor Central right here. <laughs> Any other sponsorships? No, bro. No <laughs> sponsorships. Uh, the, the chain. Oh, yeah. Everything I wear is sponsored. Shop GLD. Um, Muslims are not allowed to wear gold, so this is not right. real gold. It's just the color gold. Y'all see the necklace. See what I'm repping, man, I got it on my chest And I'm repping ourselves, cause you know that we the best I said I'd, I'd like to thank me And yeah, if you really wanna do it, can do it, G, uh, uh Yeah, the beat is kind of weird through the headphones But you know I'm about to spit it and you know I'm dead wrong Kinda like Biggie when he featured Eminem Yeah, I'm rapping off the top and you know I'm a veteran I'm a legend and I'm kinda like a late night letterman Cause when I do this thing, do it late night Then I win every single time and every occasion My food is very spicy, I throw it on some Cajun And you know these can never compete with me And you know these Never gonna repeat these beats Cause it's too insane Off for the mental Any instrumental The flow is detrimental Did I even mention I got my best friends With me on this podcast And you know that God's fast And you know he's number one And you know it's one tribe Do it till we die And we always come with one vibe One love One people Cause we all equal love Palestinians We love the Jews And the Christians Everybody know he double crossed me Like he Christian Too like his Christian hey. bell And you know I'm Batman Yeah I'm Batman And you know I got like Five hands I could play It's like a poker table If you wanna do this Then do a week And snorkel later Cause you know I'm I'm underwater Yeah I'm overseas And, and I'm Underrated. My ass is frozen with some antifreeze I'm underrated but I made it Cause you know I'm never hated, never faded But I'm jaded to this real life shit And you know I got a mother That's all you get That's all hey. you gotta subscribe for more There's a difference between like Freestylers, like battle rappers right. And then like art, like people who can go in the studio right. and just cook right. So like, yeah. like, a, like a Meek Mill for example And then there's the ones that can do it all Yeah, obviously But Those are the delusional that's ones Eminem, That's why Eminem is Eminem <laughs> Stop holding the mic But like Meek Mill, for example, he has some insane old videos of him like yeah, battling, uh, battle rapping, yeah. and he like took that like everyone clowns him for like yelling the whole time, but like that's, that's just like his style. Y'all thought I was finished when I bought the ass <laughs> mine. They thought it was. I mean, finished? that's top ten like yeah, it's, most it's classic cemented. moments it's of cemented. rap history, basically. Yeah, it's cemented. So like, anyway. six nine though. Best MCs, you gotta put them on the table. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us all of the brands that you've you've done work with. So, um, so this is a Google Pixel phone. Mm -hmm. It's a great phone, honestly. It has so many features that your guys' phones don't have. Like what? Um, well, one, it has battery share, which is my favorite thing. <sighs> I'm so glad they finally figured that out. Bro. It has battery share. You can literally charge your phone. Your iPhone? You could charge any phone for real well, with it's it. Charging. It's charging my phone. That. It's taking battery from the Pixel. It's it's sharing the battery. Amazing. It's a wireless charger. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So that's crazy. It has you know you can take pictures and it removes stuff from the background. 
Did um, you ever think about that as a kid? Like, why don't, why can't I just steal my friend's charge? Yeah, from their phone? yeah. And now they did it. Now they did it. It's crazy. Google bro. Pixel, guys. So that's one sponsorship. Um, this is the Google Pixel Watch. Uh, guess my heart rate. Um, right now it's pretty high. I'd say you're one thirty. I'm eighty nine. I'm one thirty. I'm cool and calm. You know, cool as a cucumber. You know, I have got my thousand one hundred seventy five steps so far. Not that great. Um, I got these shoes from Kunzuri. Um, <laughs> this guy's whole life is sponsored. Um, and I have. Uh, I'm sponsored by a couple other things. Where's the chair from? Oh, the chair is Pure One Imports. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, IKEA. So, what's your favorite brand deal that you've done? Like the, <sighs> that you actually enjoyed the product that they sent you? Google Google Pixel, I think, is the best. Is it because it's your current brand deal? No, I, I love Google. Like, you know, Google right, is great. Right, that's a big one. And internationally, you know, and even in America, like Android, there's a whole Android community. And I think Google is like the top of that. And like the uh, Apple and Android community have to go together. To I think they need to team up. OK, um, let's ask him though? a more divisive question. Are you uh, team Apple or team Android? Team Green Tech? Uh, dude, if, if a, if a girl, it, look, if a girl, if I match with a girl on, on a dating app, which you do very often. I mean, come on. How many uh, matches do you have right now? More than a matchbox, my guy. It's, uh, this, guy <laughs> this guy only speaks matches. In that it's lit. With the uh, with blue checks. With blue check women. Um, um, but, but anyway. then it's like, what happened <laughs> what? to what happened to outside game? You know what I'm saying? Real life game. Yeah, when it comes to real life game, I'll he'll be like, bro, go go up to that girl. I was like. Nah, I'm gonna just sit this guy here. This cannot talk to a female. I'm gonna sit in here like a robot on the Yo, side. he of got it. he got like very mildly turned down by one by a hotel lobby receptionist and by a hotel receptionist. And I was he trying just to invite her to your to your event, <laughs> <laughs> bro. It sat with him. It was like three I still hours think later. I want to go back to the hotel. <laughs> this, right this now. Is L Riz right here. He couldn't accept it. You just drop L's in the chat, guys. <laughs> no, I don't know. It's a blubbin. It is. But um, uh, what were you yeah. saying? So like, yeah, uh, if if a girl sends me with a green. I don't care if she's a 10 out of 10, bro. She sends me a, a green bubble in the text. Oh, it's man. over. Oh, I mean, that's man. the only thing that Apple has is iMessage. You ever try to, you ever get roasted in the group whoa, chat? Whoa, 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 whoa. That's a very strong statement. I mean, everything else is better with Google. What about AirDrop, bro? AirDrop? AirDrop, I, I mean, give you AirDrop. You, could be but on your you Mac. can share. You can do it with, you can do it here. Yeah, but who has a Google Pixel? I do. <laughs> you know what I'm I can um, literally copy something on my MacBook and paste it on my phone and vice versa. Yeah, it's I can copy uh, something on my phone and paste it on my MacBook. It's like, the, didn't you see that the other the day? The Apple yeah. ecosphere yeah. is unmatched. Like what from the watch about? to the AirPods to the phone to the like, just it's just so user friendly compared to the Android. And then like the picture quality, like have you seen the memes about like the iPhone pictures versus Android pictures? No, no, but the Google Pixel picture quality is is fire. He's moving on to the next one, guys. So the next sponsorship, <laughs> um, I think we'd do great with Old Spice. If you smell bad like Talal, um, <laughs> get some Old Spice, get some swagger, something that Assad doesn't have. Um, True. <laughs> and Who uh, has swagger anymore? <laughs> you know swag, you know? Why are we saying the hard R? <laughs> yeah, right. It's swagger. Swag. No hard it's R. It's drip nowadays, bro. What are the kids saying? What's the newest version of, of chill it's with Riz. the sponsors, it's Riz. bro. We got to get these Riz. out all the way. Riz is the new one, I guess. Riz is the new because we started swag. with Swagger, right? And then we moved on to Swag. Yeah, Swags. Swagger was like and then Swagoo, flat brim cap, long big baggy t-shirt, baggy jeans. That was Swagger. Yeah, right? like that shirt, Swagger. This is Swagger. Yeah, it's like a little, <laughs> dated. but you know we repping for the steam, baby. All yeah, day. all day. Yes, sir. Um, flag and on then my chest, you're if you're trying to get buff like this guy over here, flex for them. I wore, Assad, I wore sleeves for the first time. His personality is the gym. And pre-workout by Liana Deeb mm. tastes amazing. Tell us about uh, your relationship with Liana Deeb. Liana Deeb is a... She's Arab and she's Latina. And she's she works out. And she's an inspiration for many women. Many Even people that I know, um, have, have known from before, have watched her videos and are inspired by her. And she came out with this pre-workout with Bloom. And it's great. I'm about to dry scoop it. S right drone. after you finish that, we should talk about her recent um, change of uh, pace on Instagram. I thought I thought that was very thoughtful and uh, interesting. Yeah, she's. Um, Let's. Uh, can you tell her what? Can yep. you tell everybody what what she did? I said. Go ahead. Yeah, she um, is as a personal decision that is like influenced by her faith. You know, modesty. Being a Muslim, right? Yeah, yeah, she's Muslim. 
um, you Mus- know, Muslim, not Muslim. Did you say we just talked about Muslim, this, bro? Sorry. We're Muslim. gonna say Arabic words oh. the Arabic way, bro. Yeah. This is uh, the Habibi house, not the Habibi I did house. The, also, I, I did Please, this movie. Uh, Muslim. I, I did this movie it's called Muslim. I did this movie called Muslim. It was my my first movie ever, and it was about um, Danny Glover's character mispronouncing Muslim, and he's like, "You Muslims, Muslims," and um, and it, that just shows like everything is mispronounced. Yeah. So like, we have to be the example. Yeah. That's with problem. Leanna D being a Muslim, with and Leanna, she Leanna recently being made a, a yeah. She uh, you know, she kind of. How do you say she it? was like, rebranding. She's rebranding herself yeah. and she doesn't want to show off too much skin, even though she works out and her body is yeah. her pride. She's not trying to show off too much skin and, you know, be like these girls are all they're doing is showing off their butt, or their gains. Right. You know, she wants to be more than that. And I think she has a really great community that supports her and mm-hmm. realizes that yeah. you can work out, you can make your body what you want it to be, but you don't have to Without show off to broadcast it. Well, I mean, but the here's world. the thing, like it's a personal mm-hmm. decision, like just because you're in gym clothes doesn't mean you're being immodest but it's her own that's how she like she's not comfortable in those clothes anymore and showing them to over four and million people yeah and i feel like gym clothes have i mean clothing in general and fashion obviously has changed over time but like gym clothes nowadays are like biker shorts which are like i remember when leggings were controversial like when leggings were considered pants and now leggings are considered a regular item of clothing for any yeah woman. what's up with that guys and then they became legging shorts and so it's like it's even less fabric, you know what I'm saying? So things just become tighter, yeah, and shorter. But I think her decision. I mean, compression. There is a scientific like reason that compression. Sure, wear but then exists. you can throw something on top of it. You know what I'm saying? You can, but again, but you don't have to. It's up live, to you. Especially right. living in this country and being for, from where we are from. Yeah, coming here with the freedom. You like Liana Deeb has the like choice, right, to do it, and the other girls that don't necessarily do that have the choice not to yeah and that's the f- that's why we have yeah. the freedom here so like again going mm-hmm. off of her it's, it's her personal decision and i would i completely understand because she has such a huge following mm-hmm. and if you're not comfortable doing what you're doing in front of mil- millions of people yeah <laughs> no <laughs> we gotta I, turn the screen no up. i thought uh, I'm just I, making sure my yeah. I honestly thought it was such a powerful and, it's huge. Yeah, and, it's and amazing decision i think it's very like uh she's setting a very good example for for all the little girls that this are following is, her that's and it's 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 really saying that i don't care about my clout even though i got here doing what i do i'm willing to put it all on the line and rebrand entirely because, because I, I have and because i don't want to continue doing what i'm doing right and even it takes so much guts. Even another yeah. one of my friends, Sophia, respect Sophia Elizabeth. Uh, she's also rebranding, and she's starting this whole wave of women that are rebranding their image and like um, not being on OnlyFans and all of right. that. Because a lot of social media is just sexualized, even if right. you're not being naked. Yeah. Shout out Sophia, come on our podcast. And Liana, do you guys like leggings? Comment below. Again, with the compression and, and how you look and how you feel. It does affect your workout directly. I can see that. I can see that being a thing because I do like to see my yeah. when I'm curling. But so there's a double standard, I think. Like, uh, you know, guys can wear. It's definitely a double standard. Yeah, a tight shirt, but when it comes to leggings, it's like, oh, that's, you know, what what's she trying to do? Why is everyone trying to stare? Well, at Well, no, me? I think men should be modest too. I don't think you should wear shorts that are so tight that are showing off. You know, your but a nether, bike your like a biker regions. A biker literally. There's really not much left to the imagination. No, it's very disturbing. Yeah, it's but it is there. I mean, swimmers very skimpy, but it's all context, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it's really the reason why is because it's an efficient form of clothing, right? It's what? not for. I mean, it does. But the byproduct is kind of showing off your your figure, but really, it's. I think it's the, the other way. The I think it's, I think the, it's the other way around. I think the intention of it is to show off the figure, but a it swimmer also is not has, wearing board shorts. I'm not talking about swimmers. I'm talking. We're talking about specifically like um, gym gym wear for women. Since we're talking about Leon, well, first of all, okay. let me just say this: what? Feel, wear whatever makes you comfortable. We're just talking about our personal yeah. uh, views and values, and like the decision that Liana made, and I and I respect because I do think it is um, right important to to, to act on. She's setting a good believe. example, but the the problem I have with that statement is that the op that that the, the opposite the is refers, bad. The refers, yeah. So that is kind of insinuating that a person who's on OnlyFans or, you know, wearing shorter, skimpier clothing 
is a bad example. And I have a problem with that. I, I would agree that someone that's on OnlyFans is not setting a good example. I mean, that's a very easy point. Yeah. What do you think about that? That's, I mean, that is a controversial topic for sure. I think it's, I think it's it a shouldn't per, be controversial. Again, it's a personal decision. Not everyone, you, you know, it's, it's hidden behind, uh, you know, you have to be over a certain age. You got to be an adult. Um, you have choices. You, the person who's subscribing has the choice to sub like subscribe. Um, it's, it's a for, I mean, it's the oldest form of, uh, it's the oldest it's job. It's the oldest in the profession. Yeah. That doesn't make it a good. And it's not, I'm not even saying that it's not even prostitution. If we had, for example, Mia Khalifa on our show, she could describe Who's what that? she went. She's a, she's a Middle Eastern adult or a former that, you know, she was on changed. Rami. She was the actress on Rami. That's how we know her. Oh, that's the only thing What's we've her seen name? of her. Mia Khalifa. Uh, Mia Khalifa. Is she related to Wiz? Yeah. I think they're cousins. Okay. Yeah. But, uh. Khalifa. Black and yellow, they, black they, and yellow, black and yellow. Where do they live? Black and yellow, black and yellow. Where do That's they live? That's the only song. Yes, someone where do they mentioned. live? Burj Khalifa. Burj Khalifa. They have anyway, a permanent residency. Yeah. I feel like that, like, the, oh, the sexualization of women is going to happen anyway. It happens. I see it at the gym. Ah. I actually look ah. at, I don't even look at women. I look at men lauding over women. Like, it's, it actually pains me to see these things happen. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, so when it happens, I'm like, okay, I feel so bad for these girls, for the most part, and they deal with whatever we deal with times one hundred. Yeah, so it's so, gonna happen for free. So. so why not profit off of it already? Like, there, it's already happening to them in real life, so they're gonna profit off of it and actually make something out of it. In general, pornography is degrading to women for the most part. I, some there's some that argue that it's empowering and that they're taking it into their own hands and if that's how they feel good for them but I think the reason I respect and, and admire and agree with Liana's decision is because the, the Islamic view and like the view I have personally is that women are more than their bodies sure. women are more than their physical appearances more than their sexuality so when women choose to be modest people think of that as oppressive like you think oh Middle Eastern women are covered up so they must be oppressed. No, it's quite the contrary. Because they cover their bodies, we're able to focus, uh, ideally, the goal is, and this is, of course, there's many Middle Eastern women that are oppressed. I, I acknowledge this. Oh, yeah. But the idea is if you, if you don't focus on the physical, then you can get to know their right. mental. You can get to know them intellectually. You can focus on the aspects of them that actually matter versus the, f the highlight and the yeah. focus being their physicality. So but that role, that rule or where that came from and what you're alluding to is that men can't focus if they're wearing uh, no men are about, men are dogs okay and of course. i so think that this, so they're yeah, having they have to dress a certain way so that a guy no, can restrain no, himself no it's, yes it's of not, course it's not no, it's and not no, just I don't it's not necessarily that. that you're supposed to lower your gaze for sure we believe that also as muslim men that you're supposed to avert your gaze but it's about what you're promoting. It's also about. But it's not just because I'm. I, this is. A we're God, talking about OnlyFans, bro. The, I the think conversation oh, you're talking, is OnlyFans. You're going fans. way back. You're going back to. It's all the same. It's all the same. It starts with but posting she didn't even skimpy wear, things she, on Instagram, she, and the, the 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 extent of it, the extreme of it, is going on OnlyFans and doing pornography. But it's all the same conversation. I think OnlyFans OnlyFans normalizes. That. It does, and that now society normalizes as a whole what? is sexualizes women in America and in the West. Women have become overly sexualized, and therefore they have been degraded. Like whatever you consider pornography, that's also arbitrary. For example, when I do photo shoots, I don't do any like I do what I consider artistic. Oh, here we go with the. With I the, mean, do you you consider artistic? Art. But do they? Yeah, so like, do they consider it artistic, or the people that are the signed viewers, up? Viewers, are they are they going to a museum? It's or also are they why going to. Well, yeah, I, I, a lot of it's my, a lot of the, sh the photos that I do are statuesque, and like I like that Roman. Like when you go to a museum and you see nudity, it's 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 art. This it's is a true. sculpture. This so like true. I try to emulate. I like tapping into that and and redoing that in a modern way. Whatever makes you, whatever makes you happy, whatever whatever sure, helps yeah, you at sleep at night. The end of because the day. you th you know that the people are sexualizing it, and it is oh, sexual for many me. people. That's why I didn't yeah. do the sponsorship with feet feet pictures because I was like, well, I don't sexualize feet, but there are people that are going to sexualize it and that you yeah. know that's what they get off on. So, I didn't do it because I'm like, well, this is 
you know, basically. You uh, know what, what it's about. I know what it's about. I know what it's listing. I know it's like a fantasy, yeah. whatever, yeah. for some people. So I just I just remembered. Before you say yeah, that point, just of the, your, your museum point, I think it's different. I, I, I agree that, like, nudity over history has been um, portrayed artistically, but I think it's different to see a statue of David versus to see David himself in the in the buff. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's there's a physical. Right. So you're not seeing me in the buff. You're seeing. I'm a picture definitely of me. not looking okay. at your. No, but I'm saying like even even when you're I seeing. You're a picture seeing I don't even open buff. your Instagram, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, I avoid that. So I, his Instagram. I have what's, four what's different wrong with Instagrams. It? Um, let's, you know he has he continue. has bodybuilding. Um, but you think it, you which, think it's too thirst trappy sexual. I mean, I push I push the. I've always danced on that line. Too much skin for 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 my interest. I'm not gonna look at it. You know what I'm saying. In terms of what's but more objectively you, eye catching, of course, something some things are gonna be more eye catching than others for sure. But the, again, the a, a human being having to, having to change how they portray themselves to appease another person is is bad. I, right, yeah, I don't think on? I don't think anyone should do anything to yeah, appease others. I think they should do it for themselves and for their own um representation and how they want to feel so if they if they want to be skimpy then then that's definitely up to their prerogative and that's that's fine but i think that comes with you also have to accept the, some of the consequences that come and that's again not yeah. justifying any type of abuse god forbid that ever you know what i'm saying happens to anybody which obviously happens all the time every time that a woman is abused it is 100 percent the fault of the man that carried out the abuse um so but we're not talking about like sexual abuse. We're just saying, um, in terms of portraying yourself as as a woman or a man, you have to be selective in your in your portrayal, in your image. Yes. Why do men have nipples? Wow, it's a great question. <laughs> this allows me to open this drink. It's a great question. Let's think about that. Drop it in the comments. Why, why do men have because nipples? Because everyone starts as a woman. Everyone starts biologically. As a woman. Okay. Do you guys agree with that? Okay. You can't. Is that really agree why? or disagree? Yeah. It's because we have the Y. We start with the Y chromosome, however that works. Why, though? <laughs> ah. We need to be funnier. All right. Um, Arab draft, okay? We're all going to draft our favorite Arab people, and we can't say what another person has said. Okay. So I'm going to go first. I would say Omar Sharif, who is an Egyptian actor who was like, it was in Lawrence of Arabia. He was one of the first Egyptian actors. Was Arab he actors. Lawrence? What's his real name? He was Arabia, actually. Oh, okay. Got no, <laughs> he was in Lawrence of Arabia. Whatever. What's his real name? His real name is Michel uh, something. So his name is an Omar Sharif? It's not Omar Sharif. What? But he made his name more ethnic so, to be the ethnic guy in Hollywood. Let me, let me finish. Right? And it's even Michel when I... Michel Shalhoub. Michel Shalhoub. That's your yeah. grandpa's grandpa's grandpa. Wait, um, there's Mar It's not I just... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. So it's Omar Sharif. But he's really a Shalhoub. He is also a Shalhoub? Yeah. Oh, he's a Shalhoub. You're and destined Tony for, Shalhoub. For success in Hollywood. Tony I'm Shalhoub. The trifecta. Lebanese yeah. uh, actor Tony hey, Shalhoub. You're my yeah, no, 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 I'm not used to that. that. I'm, I'm, I'm still an Arab Sharif. Okay. <laughs> so he made himself more ethnic just to be the ethnic guy. Yeah, interesting. And I, I have a whole thing about that. When I came to Hollywood, yeah. people were like, well, you know, you need to change your name to like John or Steve or something just so you can, like, because you could play white. Something more digestible. But now it's like more. Um, Good. It's now it's better to be ethnic, right? Um, and be you know yeah, stand out. Like so, I'm glad I didn't change. Me, my name. Like going off of that point, like when I would go on, like when I would see these names on TV, and I wanted to be an actor, mm -hmm. and I was I I couldn't imagine having those names on TV. Like my I I would always see could I see SHL Hoob mm. on the screen? Yeah. When you're seeing just like regular Brad John, Pitt. yeah, Brad George Pitt. Clooney. Yeah. I mean, Deca I mean, like the Shout Italian. out Amal, his wife, putting yeah, us on yeah. the map. Yeah, there's a lot of independent, strong Middle uh, Eastern women in the building. Let's finish this little Long segment. story short. Uh, guys like Omar Sharif and uh, even Tony Shalhoub, um, who kept their names or made it more, even made it more ethnic. They paved the way for. They, for yeah, for they us. were mavericks in their own regard. So, yeah. what's your pick? Like Logan Paul. Your first pick. I have to go first round pick, Tony Shalhoub. Okay. We're doing 1 1. 1 1. Um. Or shell hoops. Dead or alive? Dead or alive. Yeah. Um, I'm going um Hamad Assaf. Who is that? He's a very talented singer from Gaza. Okay. He won like Arab Idol and then it catapulted him into He's alive? success. Yeah. Okay. He just recently well, recently it was okay. like ten years ago now. Nice. Okay, for with my second pick. How many picks do we get? 
Is it Khalid Asa? No, it's Muhammad Khalid is my friend. It's not Khalid. Um, <laughs> neighbor. <laughs> I mean, for my two pick, I have to go Rami. Ooh. Which one? Both of them. Nah, nah. <laughs> okay. You gotta pick one at a time. The Rami, the, the Egyptian Rami, you know? They're Rami. both Egyptian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Egyptian Rami. Rami Egypt- Malik? They're both Egyptian. Um, they're both Egyptian? That's yeah. hilarious. That's pretty funny. They spell their name differently, though. I right, know. Uh, yeah, I'll go, yeah, I'll go, go, I'll go Rami Yusuf. Yeah, bro. Yeah. That's, a, that's a real OG Rami. I OG Rami. I mean, who's current? Older? Current OG. <laughs> Next one? I mean, second pick. Going off of that, Rami Malik has been in one of the, like, uh, he's been in huge roles. Yeah, he, and he's yeah, definitely, definitely the more like the younger version of like the Tony Shaloubs and the Omar Sharifs because yeah. he's being put in gigantic roles from Bohemian Rhapsody to J- the James Bond yeah. villain role and yeah. all of these. So that's your yeah. second pick. Oh, he yeah, he's okay for sure. And it, I think it was very fitting for him. Sorry to be in Queen, Mr. Robot too. Yeah, Mr. Robot. Yeah, because Queen uh, Freddie Mercury was an immigrant, a child like a Muslim, a child of Muslim yeah, parents. Yeah, he's Syrian. I didn't know that. Freddie Mercury is Syrian. I, did, I like that was mind blowing. That's crazy. Wow. Second pick. Second pick would be if you're doing. I'm going Mo Amer. Mo Amer. So, oh I'm surprised you're not going musicians, man. <laughs> um, I got I got one coming up, but Mo Amer is okay. definitely like the fact yeah, that the he, Palestinian his stuff story is, still, is yeah. you know be highlighted on Hulu is fucking. So crazy. I got two actors. I gotta go with a musician, and I gotta go. The first one was a musician, Khalid Asa. Yeah, but I like mean, a, Asa. but like a, um Kalthum kind of person. Yeah. Um, with my third pick, I third am going with Belly. Ah, fuck! That's why that was my <laughs> next one. Bro. This you guy's trying to do an all Palestinian bro. draft. <laughs> yeah, I, you I can't could take. Tell. I'm the rapper, bro. What do you mean? You could have picked him earlier. Who, who's the first guy you picked? It was, it was Khalid Asa. <laughs> no one knows who that is. You gotta, Ahmed. you gotta Ahmed. pick the best this ones first. That could have been a fifth round pick. Yeah, you're right. So I'm going third. Belly, who's Canadian. Who is Palestinian? He signed with uh, the Weekend. Um, he's wrote many songs with the Weekend. He's a great rapper um, and a great representative. Go check out his Ellie Leakers and, freestyle. Yeah. one of the best freestyles I mean, of all time. All this stuff. Um, shout out Belly. But who else? Ridiculous is he, uh, bars. Very we got a C for you on the podcast. Who else is Thanks. he affiliated? Iowa. Who else is he affiliated with? Come rap. Let's see. You know, what I'm saying bar for bar. Before he was doing. Um, look like Yusuf. Look like Hamza. Who gave him that? He doesn't have. Hey, he hey, guys, guys, guys. Surrounded by Lebanese people, no one could tell him. Oh, dramatic. go ahead. It's a Habibi thing. Ah, shout, shout out, out Habib. Habibs. Shout uh, out Habib. We have a seat for you. Bring the hookah. Hopefully, you have a that seat for us. We need that hookah, bro. Yeah, Mashisha. All right. Go, what is your third pick? So before Belly was doing collabs with the Weekend, he was doing collabs with Masari. Sorry. What does Masari mean? It means money. It means money. This guy, Airboard this guy's day. worked his way up. For so sure. he's a rapper. Back in the early two thousands, when it's I was stuck in, love literally, that you bro, don't know about. dude, fire. I've been listening to that album nonstop lately. So. All right, next, next. No, pick? no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Real okay. quick, real quick. He uh, a three part segment wh- on TikTok. <laughs> when I was uh, yeah, when I was idiot. stuck in in Lebanon during the war in two thousand six, all I listened to was like Masagi. real love, rush the floor with belly, like. That's that is like that is ingrained in my memory. So like the fact that we're they're still relevant is, yeah, is amazing. It's, it's pretty dope. And speaking of speaking of Belly's old music, sorry, I'm I'm gonna give you yeah. my pick. He like I feel like people forget that Belly has been doing this oh, for a minute. Like he I, had bangers back in the day. Like and seeing the, him rise up is amazing. For but him, you can't for sure. find his old music anywhere. Like I remember he had those hardcore hip hop beats. You know what I'm saying? That would just make yeah. you like. Dance. I don't know. And you Maybe can't he wants to distance in. himself from that. I don't know. Let's get that Maybe. third pick. That such good music, though. Yeah. Um, my third pick is going to be... Um, <clears throat> or I had it. Um, it's... Um, o- old school? No, 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 no. It was... Uh, oh, Talib. DJ Khaled. D- <laughs> hey. Say it again. God did <laughs> DJ Khaled. Hey. Another one. See, he brands... Another it's one. important how you brand yourself, because yeah. now I say now his, word, knows. his name is Khaled instead of Khaled. But DJ Khaled, he just did the Grammys. He had Hove perform his 10-minute verse. Yeah. Um, he did the song God did. So I think Khaled can do better. Khaled can do better about, like, representing us. But he's he still does. Like, he'll here and there he'll mention Mak- Makluba. Okay. I mean, if you go back in that, it. if you go back to what we were talking about, he kept his name. Yeah, Khaled. he did keep his name. I mean, his his first name and last name are, are both the same. Khaled. He had two to pick from. <laughs> yeah. Is, <the> is <laughs> so it like, your first name? I've never, I've, I've never heard him, you know, say "Free Palestine," for example. Like, not even, not yeah. even just that. And that's a whole we could talk about that. Yeah, for, we'll, we'll talk for about it when we bring him on. 
My fourth pick is Salma Hayek. Ooh. Oh, if you're Lebanese, going Salma Hayek. Mexican mm. actress, beautiful, great actress. Um, Salma Hayek. Keep doing your thing. Okay. If you're going Salma Hayek, I have to go with Shakira. Shakira, Shakira, Shakira. I have her signature on a napkin, and she kissed Legend. it. She kissed it? Her lipstick is on that napkin. Wow. It's framed. Can I borrow that napkin? <laughs> Bro. <laughs> <laughs> what's, your, what's your fourth I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> uh, my third. Fourth. I guess we're doing a fourth. We're doing a, a, a woman. Um, honestly, I'm just going to go with Ma- Mae Kalamawi. Ooh. Because I saw her training for that superhero role on Marvel, and bro, yeah. she is a fucking G. Like, she was doing some insane stunt what about work the, and uh, acting. The other Palestinian. Um, we oh. just we mentioned her name. Abba, uh, the one on uh, Succession. On something on Bass. The Rami's yeah. mom. It starts with an H. Rami's mom? He am at Bass. With my last pick, I'm going Amal Clooney, human rights activist, wife to George Clooney. What's her um, last name? What's her actual last name? Clooney. No, her real last name. Oh, uh, I don't know. Arabs don't take their husband's last name. We keep our women independent somehow. Um, okay, so that's my fifth pick. For my fifth pick, I'm going to have to go with the legend, Um Kalthum. Mm. And I think... Oh. The re- I did. I forgot Faye Rose. My mom's going to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the reason why is because I think we're going to sample her music. I, I've been on a kick lately. I've been listening to all her stuff. I mean, all her stuff. One song is 40 minutes. I used to roast my parents for playing it, and now 20 years later, I'm I'm really yeah, enjoying it. Baby yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, uh, you know, have fun. That's how it happens. <laughs> like you, you, you start as a yeah. kid. You dislike Arabic music. You dislike a lot of like Arabic desserts. Habibi <laughs> Oh, shit. Uh, that was pretty which, good. That was pretty good. All right, all right. Speaking of which, I'm going. I'm gonna diab. Okay. For my, Ooh, for my fourth baby, pick. Habibi, <laughs> Habibi. Like the usher habibi. of the Arabic world. Literally. <laughs> Let's get on to the next segment. That was great, though. Who's winning? So who's winning? Whose team is up? I think my team Vote for up. your favorite team. Who had the best draft pick? Who had the best? Who did we miss? Yeah, who did we miss? Who did we miss? Uh, Runner-ups. Uh, honorable mentions. <laughs> and, and we just got demonetized, baby. Banger. The fact that I have this saved. George Rasouf is an is honorable, honorable George mention. George Rasouf, Feirouz. Feirouz. Oh, no, I mean, gonna kill the, me. you're, like, w- these are like modern legends versus like right. legend. Le- right, right, like, right. Sh- she's like Cher. Yeah. 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 What does Habibi mean? Habibi means my love. We said it. My love. There's, there's different, uh, I, I don't even know the words. Mm-hmm. Genders? It's an endearing it's word. A, it's a term of endearment. Yeah. You say it to any Arab, you say Habibi, and they'll love you. But here's the th- th- this was actually in, in my comments when I said Habibi. Habibi can be used for both. Both male, genders. Yeah, both genders. Both, se- what do we say? Both sexes? We're not doing this. I don't know. Like, I want to be, <laughs> be as correct as possible. Uh, yeah, so. For both everybody. Male and female. <laughs> everybody uh, Habib- can be a Habibi. Habibi can be fe- female. Uh, female. Female and male. Female. <laughs> That's his gender. I'm, I'm, female. I'm a female. <laughs> Everybody's a I'm Habibi. Me, bro. Uh, okay. uh, you come to our house, you're so, a Habibi. But so, Habibti, right, is directly strictly towards for women. Yeah. But Habibi technically, grammatically, is, means for men, but like Arab male singers, I think, popular popularized it being used for yeah. like women, like a term of endearment My for women. I love. Okay. Yeah. This is why I ended up agreeing that it's to, to call ourselves a Habibi house because it almost ropes. The, the the widest net of people in yeah. but then we can actually talk about real shit on the podcast and we're not being just you know you ex- maybe you expect it to be shallow it has kind of a shallow feel ring to it but then you actually come on the podcast and then you see the substance and then you're actually you know to actually give I think them it's also the le- real yeah and we're leaning deal. into that fact that it's funny that it, right it, we're only using the three the arabic word. words that yeah. people know and we have a Think of hummus right there. Yeah, for yeah. Reason. Lebanese bread. So it's like we're almost like. Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> is this the long? Is that's Lebanese bread? Pita. That's Lebanese, Lebanese bread. Lebanese is the big. Is this the, the big mini circle. size? That's the mini. Is it's not the, Lebanese. Uh, it's it's the, Lebanese. Look, Lebanese is the one where it's. Lebanese flag, bro. I mean, I, I mean, there's like Greek pita. There's like it's the Persian one you bring on the pita plane. bread. The I think Lebanese, Lebanese is the best. The Lebanese, to me, when I think Lebanese pita, is the, it's the wide. It's yeah. the long. Uh, it's the big, the big. All right, so the wide, the long, the big. Can we talk bread. about like bread. Bread. just <laughs> Arabs in America? You know, under the census. What do you mean by that? 
under the census, we are technically white. We're grouped in with the Caucasians. Interesting. Um, and like we've been trying to fight for our own category for you know Arabs or Middle Eastern people. And Middle Eastern is just a, is a huge net that includes non Arabs as well, Turkish people. Um, yeah, Middle uh, Eastern is also up for interpretation as well. Yeah, Middle Eastern. I mean, what is you the look Middle up, East? You look up what who is Middle Eastern. Yeah. On Google, and it gives you like fourteen different maps. America calls us white. They they also call us terrorists. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I'm saying we're. We're not. We're not necessarily white, <laughs> but we are defined this under the traditional, like under the, the Google definition of the, the United States census definition. It's, it's people of Europe, ancient people of Europe yeah. and the Middle East. Against us. Right. You want to hear this conspiracy that why America says that we're white? Because Jesus is Middle Eastern. Ah, I've heard And this. they wanted Jesus to be white. Right. So cool. they said, you guys are white. Yeah. Middle Eastern people are white. So Jesus could be white. Interesting. When he wasn't. You know that the no, Jesus, Jesus was Middle Eastern. He Middle was Eastern. Palestinian. He, was he probably brown. didn't look too different than us. He was I mean, brown. He was, guy. Dark, he was even darker. And he, he was, was actually darker. classically, I think it was said that he wasn't actually even that attractive. Mm. He's made out to be like the guy that you see on like the, the church stained glass right. windows and stuff oh, is man. actually based off Whitewashed. of Whitewashed. That's that's Jared Leto. Based, that's Jared Leto. <laughs> it's based off of uh, Constantine. Oh, okay. So cool. The, so. Gr the green eye, the blue eyes, the light skin. That's a great clip. Of Jesus is based off of somebody else and not who is historically Jesus. Okay. I will say just as a kid doing the SATs, like trying to circle something. Like oh, I put other. White, Middle East. Yeah, I put other, other every it time. It was always other. Because it's it literally so said, it said Caucasian, Middle Eastern together. I'm like, no. I don't it get the privilege. It said Middle Eastern? Yeah, yeah. I just put See, black. I, we didn't have that in Jordan. I just put black. That's how I got into college. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, literally, affirmative we don't get affirmative action, 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 baby. We don't get like we don't. It get says those Caucasian things. slash Middle Eastern yeah. on your SATs. It says like yeah. including uh, Middle Eastern it people does? in the white Caucasian, section. like really? Caucasian Middle Eastern. Are, are That's the one. closest we've gotten. See, we I didn't we didn't have that. It just said Caucasian, so we get Latino, and then why is it always like? Are Latino, you Latino or not? Non Latino. Like why? Why does it make you specify twice? Racially motivated. Wait, why wait where did that? you go to school? I mean, there's. I went to school in Jordan. And I went to school for the the end of my high school career was in King's Academy. And then you went to school in America, which is actually yeah. Then I went to college in BYU, but King's Academy is actually the king of Jordan. That's Jordan's. a whole other conversation about your experience BYU's at other, in Utah. You can talk about it, it uh, whenever. But King's Academy is actually the king's uh, of Jordan's school. He established it to to bring in um, basically to bring a, a school, a Western education. Yeah. To the Middle East is the is the monarchy taken seriously there? Oh, absolutely! Yeah. <laughs> a lot of respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, because um, usually it's kind of like in modern times, it's kind of just like a face. No, is no, he's definitely lot, not a figurehead. He's respected and he's actually loved. I think he's one of the most admired um, Arab rulers, and I think he's done kind of one of the better jobs, one of the best jobs, really. He he would come and speak at our like school assemblies mm -hmm. once a year. He went to it's our the same guy still. Is he, or Malik is he? Abdullah, yeah. Nice. And uh, shout rule, out, shout out to the, the king and the queen as well. She's they rule the whole, queen, Rania, their whole life like, um, until they die? Yeah. So his son oh. actually went to my school, um, the heir of the throne. He's on my soccer team. That's dope. What's up, Hussein? Nice. Uh, <laughs> CD. Okay, Saddam Hussein, overrated or underrated? He's Whoa. just he's <laughs> doing, doing Steve Street. So. I'm, doing provo I'm just going Whoa. to the provocative stuff. Overrated for Very sure. Overrated? overrated? Yeah. Okay, so in Arabic, we roll our R's. Like, mm. brrr, you know, like my brother, my brother's name is Ibrahim, Ibrahim. you know, so brrr. I ha actually have to teach myself how to roll my R's. Um, and now I'm pretty good at it. Ibrahim, you know, shout out to my brother, Abe. Should we have a, a contest of how long we can? Yeah, hold it for? let's see how long. I think we should do the next segment. <laughs> Talal. <laughs> we should move on. Talal can't roll his R's. I can't. And he was a Arabic teacher in the university. Roll your R's. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> skipped over that letter. <laughs> let's see what I you got. To, like uh, CD. Uh, <laughs> can you guys say the Arabic alphabet in order? Alif, ba, ta, ta, shim, ha, ha, da. You know what they say? Zain, Shin, Shin, Sa, Ta, Ta. Rain, rain, fuck off. She left me on. Mim, noon, hell, wow. wow, yeah. Nice. She left me on. That's how you scene. know he's like recently started learning. Yeah. No, this is grammar. like from when I was like five it. years old. Yeah. I saw this girl and I said, wow. And then she's like, when do you want to meet? I said, noon. And then she left you on. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> nice. well, can you say your R's? Come on. I can't roll my R's. I have a Try lisp it. in Arabic. 
try basically. it. Arabic in lisp. English, I'm fine. Try it. When I say it, I flick it. I have a half flick. Ra. What? Ra. But she, what? you can't keep Ra. doing that. But I can't like... Continuously. <laughs> but we were learning yesterday. Yeah. He almost had me do it in the car. <laughs> hold, on, hold on. You said close your teeth. Close your teeth and just like <laughs> try to... It's a vibration of the tongue going right. up and down. <laughs> All right, roast this guy in the comments. <laughs> Usually it's just a... I can't. <laughs> you can't go... I mean, kind of, yeah. Unfortunately, it was the one letter I just... I remember I was on the balcony. My my mom's um, beautiful Step friend, from that ledge, was, my friend was trying to teach me, and uh, even she couldn't do it. So, There's a stereotype that Arabs are angry, and like we sound angry, and when we talk... Even like this one study was like Lebanese people are the angriest. That's just like yani. And it's like, listen, okay, <laughs> this, is, this is how we talk. I'm not yelling. This, this is, is how passionate. I talk. It's passionate. Yelling is a completely different thing, you know, that will scare people. Yeah. It's like Italian. Like, it's like we're just baby, animated. I'm not angry. Yeah. It's habiti. I'm not angry. I'm just passionate. Okay. Yeah. We got the clip. We got that clip, <laughs> bro. The clips will have. <laughs> he's got to. He's got to talk directly this guy's to the mind camera. Is like he's, he's so programmed steep. for content. He's, he has like, and that's but not thing. as much as Jacob. That's a good thing. Jacob is Jacob our is friend. Is Jacob is like a, content is just like constant. And he and never he, uses it. He sees yeah, that's it what through I'm the saying. lens. Like, of, you know, what else still doesn't awesome, use their content. It's still awesome. Oh, <laughs> Talal. So Talal calls the best him, who never made it. Talal's a rapper. <laughs> the best who never did it. Who never drops any music. He has the most fire mixtape on his hard drive. Coming soon. And he doesn't want the rest of the world to listen best to album it. Best album you'll never he's hear. He's gonna have the post. The best. I'm actually sick of saying coming soon. He's to gonna. Be honest. Yeah, really? I'm tired of it. He's gonna have the best post hummus album oh, yeah. ever. I'm gonna have the best post hummus <laughs> album. Post hummusly. Can I? Can I defend myself? Drop a song. I mean, you could try. I moved to LA, so my 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 thing was I was gonna move to LA. Well, I had a, I had a content house with a few friends in Utah, and we were doing really good about creating content. It was with David, our videographer, mm -hmm. uh, and the collective name was One Tribe. Shout out to Tribe Studios. Um, so One Tribe is it, what it represents for me is is that we're all we all come from different backgrounds, different families. At least me and my friends, we had a Polynesian, a Puerto Rican, African American from New York, and myself. So we went by One Tribe because at the end of the day, we're different backgrounds, different families, but one one tribe. So, anyways, we had something going, and we were releasing content constantly, and it was great. And then I made the decision to move to LA and to actually pursue this for real because I was sick of being a big fish in a small pond. Provo, Utah, and just Utah in general. It's a frozen pond. It is. It's so wait, why? Salt Lake. So why didn't you drop any music? Aren't so you? I, I, aren't you so signed I, by? You're, you're signed by. You're managed whoa, by like whoa, Drake's whoa, uncle whoa, whoa, or something. Whoa, 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 whoa. This is. Uh, Did you shoot XXX Temptation? No, bro. What is that? He's. Why are they trying Drake for murder? Well, he's got a lot. Well, not. They're not trying him, but they're, they're having a deposition. The no, the lawyer keeps blaming him because of the the lines that Drake has said in his. Yeah. His raps. Well, X, the day before X died, I guess he said, Drake is going to, if I die, it's because of Drake. Literally. On his live stream. And then That's what, Drake allegedly. goes, if uh, if you had just kept your mouth shut on your live, you'd still be alive. He said that? On his, in his Triple live. X. But he didn't After mention he it. died? He goes, Triple X. In, in one of his songs, this, he says Triple X. Uh, what is it? How does it um, go? Triple X, I always shoot below the neck. Oh, and then he's like, what? Um, oh, yeah. He's like, if you kept like your mouth closed on that live, you'd be alive again. He said that? Yeah. So he literally might be. be I mean, a, so allegedly. But, um, the rap, but like things in, in your songs can't be used against you, apparently. Of course they can. Have we not learned anything from, Free thug. from no, 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 the, like, the you Rico can't case? Use that, against, you can't uh, use that specifically to say that that's. Him. What is their name? Why is Slime? No, like th those can be clues, right? Bro, but Bobby Schmurda went to jail because he specified in California, time and. In California, they just released the law crime. that you can't, that can't be used. Now, recently. Okay, but Bobby Schmerda went to jail because he said, Mitch caught a body about a week ago. Fuck with me, you know, we're tweaking. Do you guys think Drake did it or not? Uh, definitely not. I don't think Drake did <laughs> it. He's not a murderer, bro. Come on. Um, anyways, so I moved, moved to LA. Um, I was here for six months, and then COVID struck. Um, and the world obviously changed and flipped on its head. And I ran. I got into a productive content releasing streak, and I had put out a bunch of uh, consistent videos. And then, to be honest, like work, um, making money, staying afloat, um, you know, pursuing the actual grind. What of, a distraction of, of life, right? Yeah, it's distracted out of me. And uh, really, I should just focus on uh, my my career, I know, but it sucks like my that mom tells me. And 
it sucks um, that we have to worry. But it's, instead, worry for about me, that. my career is like well, yeah. music. But yeah, unfortunately, you have to do real life things, yeah. and so. But I'm learned. in a place now, thanks to you guys, thanks to everything we have with some of the names that you mentioned, where I am, I have a team around me, and this is something I've been waiting for. I didn't want to just put my music out, my content out, without any strategy, without any, like, uh, again, I get that that's maybe counterproductive, and I do wish that I released some of the stuff I had earlier, but we're only looking forward, not backwards, and music well, is coming very soon. You know what they say. It's yeah. a volume game, and until you understand that, like, moving at any pace is better than standing still and planning it out, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And if you stay standing there trying to plan out your thousand miles, you're never going to get anywhere. Yeah. When you start walking, you'll you'll cal calibrate to where you're going and get there quicker, yeah, way a, quicker. A decision is better than no decision, that's for sure. Yeah, 100%. so I think no matter what, even if you don't have it figured out, just do it. You yeah. miss 100% of the shots. Nike. Don't take it. Nike, yeah. Pull, pull your Nike. No, 100%, up. bro. And I, I appreciate y'all for pushing me in that direction. So it's. Yeah, uh, I mean, we got we got this remix on the way. It's yeah, pretty we're much doing, done. We're, we're we moving. Skit. We're definitely moving. We got, uh, we got another song. You know, we're, we got we're, we're, a lot we're, of big things. Going to Morocco. Gonna take soon. over Morocco. <sighs> Shout out to Emi. He can't just texted me. He's on it. Another segment is like the who's claiming, like, who made hummus? Who made. Greek yogurt, like it's literally called Greek yogurt, but it's literally Laban, right? So it's it's interesting. I didn't think um, about the, the yogurt. So like, who made the yogurt? I think sh shawarma was made La by Turkish people. That's what they allegedly. I think you just have popularized. to look back and cultural appreciation of your food. Um, you know, food evolves. Other people take on the food. You know, like I mean, that's a, shawarma yeah. tacos, like the 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 shawarma, the al pastor. But. Here's a you'll you'll love this. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a guy. His name is Egypt's Beer on Twitter. He goes, "People living in the Middle East are not some special species that becomes more immune to tragedy the more they experience it. They are humans who are suffering at the levels that are almost inconceivable. To believe otherwise is to justify your cold indifference. And that is put beautifully is, as to like what we were saying." And I, and I mean, even what's been happening in the Middle East right now, like the, the earthquake that they had, you know, are they not as human as people that if, the, earth, that. if the earthquake happened? Oh, Let's my get God, into that's that. a huge Let's one. get yeah. into that. If the earthquake had happened in Europe, you know, millions and billions of dollars would have been sent. Yeah. Like we're sending to Ukraine. Yeah. But like in Turkey and in Syria. There's not global know, Syria, attention. Syria can't even get yeah. the money because they have the block, you know, uh, the blockades sanctions. on there. Sanctions. sanctions. That's insane. And um, can you talk? Can you say and then that also, for people who don't know? What the blockade and we have sanctions against Syria because you know of the you know extremist groups. Right. So the money w is not being able to send be sent there to help people. Over twenty thousand people have died in this earthquake, and if that happened anywhere else in the world, um, p people would have taken it more I mean, seriously. Look what happened in Haiti. You know, and right. and people take it turn a blind eye like, oh, these guys are used to being under rubble and being bombed and being destroyed. Disgusting. You know, and like. People aren't taking an a, a ear to that because they're Middle Eastern. And then there's also the Iranians right now who are dealing with their their thing, you know, being persecuted and being sent to jail for just dancing in the street and stuff like that and not being able to express yeah, themselves. Yeah, there's, there's a whole revolution so, that people are, are, are blind to right now in the, in the Western right? world. Yeah. I mean, there are... And there all are, we're talking about is, you know, they're, Ukraine. They're like, right. no offense, they're, but... They're imprisoning, they're imprisoning everybody in Iran just for speaking out. Or yeah, being, yeah. We, should, we should talk about that. So the so, fact that the fact that Syria, like the lack of political agility to to say yes, we sanctioned you, you know this country because of a, a leader that was violent against his people because of different extremist groups, but for them to say to punish with a broad stroke the inhabitants and especially in a time like this where there's like literal children under rubble under it's an eight ma almost an eight magnitude earthquake. And for no one to be paying attention and giving giving back to to, to Syria is absolutely. I mean, luckily wild. we live in a, in We're gonna, a in, in, technological in, advanced like area where if you want to know about it, you can. It's just that it's not being. It's bro, not it's mainstream. not being put out there. It's Usually, when something like this in the world happens, it's highlighted, Huge. it's talked about, it's rallied for relief. People are helping. The fact that the government's not even willing but you to all see, But I don't know if you've seen this, but the, from from India to Lebanon to uh, like. Tur uh, Different countries have actually Japan, sent aid. Japan, Japan has sent their people. They, so I mean, they are some good stuff happening. But too just the America time. and the American media and the American government is not sending, you know, to help those people. But with the internet age, people are able to donate. 
to the right places. Please we're gonna, donate. We're to gonna it. we're gonna put a link to so you guys Syria. can donate to the um, earthquake relief. In Turkey. Yeah, my my cousin actually has somebody who made their own um, charity fund. Okay, so we're gonna do a that. reputable one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just he said, "My cousin is cash." <laughs> my out. cousin, he's uh, he go give that water to the people. Uh, no, but I'm it's also kidding. it's also sometimes tricky with donations to, to certain organizations because you don't know if it's going to the yeah, organizations like the itself Cross, or right. to the people. You know, and Red then Cross you know some example. people Salvation have stereotypes of like, oh, is it going to a terrorist group or something? You know, and like back in the day when That's people when they would say upsetting. like the money that we can't donate to Palestine because it's going to go straight to yeah, or even Lebanon. Upsetting. People upsetting. used to in my hometown, Hezbollah. people used to send money back to Lebanon and they'd be like, oh, you're, you're supporting Hezbollah, the you know terrorist group. It's like. Well, no, I'm not, you know, so... But we'll send the Israeli military uh, $3 billion or, or Ukraine. in military support. Ukraine. I remember one time I was... Uh, I was this is what I was trying to say earlier. I went to this one event. It was when they're introducing the Manasa category, Middle Eastern, North African, and, like, starting to become more um, progressive in their perception and, you know, of, of Arabs. And there was like less terrorist roles, right? Like there was like less roles of like guys blowing themselves up. Like I used to audition for it all the time, hoping I'd never get the role. But then like this one guy went up and he's like, I'm so mad that there's no more roles that are terrorist roles. I used to get so many auditions and now I don't yeah. get any. And I'm like, bro, like you, you don't see work, what we're right? trying like, to do. It's crazy. Cause like, <laughs> you have work. to work. It's and literally a double-edged sword. It's like... 100%. And if I can go back, I'd probably take all those roles. Maybe I'd be further in my career and I can be, you know, like you almost have to like... But at what cost? You know? At what cost? Exactly. Like I'd rather starve. I'd rather be on the... on right. Like... Right. Than... Play for the other team. And have... It's going to be forever. Like if that's filmed and I'm in that role... Right. It's that trans... Even when I die, it's still there. Right. That's why we have, we have to create our own stories and tell our own stories yeah. on any, you know, level. And, and that's why people. it's huge. We're, we're doing... We're, we're, we're part of this like if you i don't know if you can see it because i can see it but like there's a wave happening yeah yeah and we're right there and this is the first bit. first ever arab american podcast habibi house <laughs> the <laughs> habibi <laughs> house Welcome tune to in the show subscribe and follow us um many many more riveting conversations and um thought-provoking you know middle eastern based content to come. and next time we're gonna bring a lot of food and try it out and yeah. we're gonna finish today <laughs> by can. And it'll be fun it won't be all you know uptight and political oh, and fun. heavy heavy topics so it's we'll, not all political but it's a perspective that hasn't been shared right because we are people that are of the middle east our arab descent but growing up in america where our stories haven't been told until recently yeah. so now we're expanding on that and i want to tell the stories of my parents and my grandparents too right. because they you know their experience yeah. kind of set the tone for us. My dad used to go uphill both ways to go <laughs> to through get to a school. snowstorm with a with a with cement shoes his desk on his back. My my grandpa because <laughs> he didn't have desks in school. Yeah. <laughs> they had to bring the desk from their house. Yeah, right. true, true story. My there's no light. <laughs> my grandpa. With a candle. Oh, there's like no light like half the day in Lebanon. Yeah, yeah. But my my grandpa used to. So don't complain. During the civil war in Lebanon, my grandpa used to sell luggage to people that were leaving the country just so he could support his kids yeah. leave, g going to America and times, getting an education. How many times have you heard this phrase, Bil Zemanet? Bil Zemanet. I am Zaman. They're like, back in my day, that's right. literally the, the trends. What about <laughs> Ala Rasi? On my head. On top. my head. Whatever you oh want, God, Ala Rasi. Transla the trans you want hummus? Let's talk about how, how the hospitality, hospitality, hospitality. Let's try talk about the hospitality. Try it again. This guy's having hospitality. a stroke. What, what, is what is the word? You got it. You got what it. What is it? Hospitality? There it is. You got it. <laughs> the hospitals. No. The, the, the hospitality of the Arabs is, is much like Southern hospitality. Whatever you want, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the shirt off my back. So, I, right. mean, I don't think 300 years ago the South was very uh, hospitable. And we'll talk about that another time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe in God? I believe in a higher entity. It's hard to, like the man-made, like, through those like those beliefs and those and and religion it's supposed to have given us a better way of living but unfortunately humans are f very flawed absolutely so as gandhi said i like your christ but i don't like your christians i don't think humans yet are evolved enough to enact religion it's it's too perfect mm. and to abide by those rules and be super stringent where like fundamentalist ideolo ideology comes from we're we're not evolved enough yet for that because we still do have our prime it goes back to what we were saying like we are still 
we we don't avert our eyes when we see a, a woman that looks great like we it's it's prime it's our primal urge to to look and to think these thoughts and all these stuff so we haven't gotten past that but that's but that's built into it's in our reli- mind. it's built into religion though it's what it's the it? acknowledgement that humans are fallible they're of imperfect course. and the idea is to observe a ideology a discipline that encourages you to curb your urges curb Cur- your encourage curb to your curb your urge curb, um, curb your enthusiasm Bapkins. and don't splurge Bapkins. on bapkings and napkins and that no, but honestly, it, it the idea is that you at least make an effort to strive towards this perfection. You'll never attain it, yeah. but you're you're attain you're you're working towards. Of course, um, we're always progressing. But the thing is, people take it too people limiting. take it way too literal and too far. And I think the lack of like malleability in Mistakes. in religion. Um, to all the type of rapper, spiritual miracle miracle real. <laughs> I, I think it's an important part of 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 accepting God is to release Islam, right? To submit your desire to know and understand everything and to relinquish that ego that wants to master and know yeah. and conquer everything is to say God is greater than me. Allahu Akbar. Right. He is the greatest. I don't understand his I will never be able to fathom his 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 greatness, right. his his existence. I just know that I didn't make this. I didn't make me. There's something greater than me like you said a higher entity and call it as it is the higher entity is god but to me a higher, or a Allah higher entity could or be jehovah whatever it is that, that high whatever ex- that higher entity to you is no no not to me i'm not talking about like god. a, a be like a, when the when same you think entity of a bee, no no, like no we're not higher, thinking the a Christian higher power could be to me the big bang uh, uh more scientifically well, who did the big uh, bang that's what who I'm, lit the match god that's that's the that's the that's word we use. question that's, that's god I think everybody religion is just made so that people can find God, and the reason there are all these distinctions of different religions is because you have to find God in your own way. No matter how you're born, yeah. you you know you can find God in your own way 100%. and be connected to that source. And it's all a test for people to find God. Is there a right God? Is there a wrong God? No, right, it's but, just God. But each person has their own, and I believe that each person Stop. has God within them. Your God is not the same as my God. It's not the same as his God. Not the same as it's all one God. God is God. Yeah. Our perception varies. Yeah. It's one. It's the higher power. It's, there is not, I'm going to make if a, you were born in, if you were born in uh, China or in, or in uh, uh, Asian country. If he was country, born in China, he'd be in a concentration camp. Oh. Myanmar, is it? No. No, uh, because Uyghurs? I'm saying if you were born there as, as a Chinese person, or as a uh, as a Japanese person, I would person. have a different understanding of God. I'm saying you be brought up even like it's it's a different it's a whole different set of it's all uh, you're literally just a roulette of like where you were born. So you just so happened to be born in a certain way that made you, you know, believe in Islam. But as to Atif's point, we all have to step back from what we were taught, whether it's religion or whether it's morals and values, whatever it is. Uh, we have to step back from our childhood teachings and to reevaluate and reassess everything that was handed to us yeah. and then come to it at our own in- at our own into us. at our own um, um, uh, conclusions about about these with these 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 issues. right i think You're religions right. are just a way that humans it's have, have it's tribal it's ways that humans have what we, humans have used to relate to god right whether it be um, Yahweh, it's it's whether it's divisive you know the, same time. the Christian religion, it's like not supposed to be. It's but that's what I'm saying. Humans, uh, it like, is divisive. That's why it's a test. It's a test for all of us to find God in our own way and realize that we're all very similar. And being good is being good, and being bad is being bad. You know, and like even with uh, alcohol and Islam, we're not saying that like you're gonna go get drunk off of one drink, but because you can get drunk, we were like, okay, don't you know? Let's let's not drink at all, right? So that's that side of that and then other religions have their own thing i mean people that drink i don't think they're all you know like um unreligious or anything but like the blank well, the quran it's, says it's that almost set but it can it has mess some with benefits to man and it has more more detriments detriment so therefore avoid it entirely exactly and you know we're trying to bring us head back from hating religion and to uh, loving god and, and drinking water right. liquid death is a water company it's sparkling they have regular types of water, Different drink flavors. water, stay hydrated. Most important thing you can drink in this world, water. And speaking of like the stereotype of Arabs being what they're portrayed in Hollywood, I remember yeah, when I- We f- can I, end on that. Yeah. 
I knew that there was obviously the stereotype in Hollywood, but when I first got to America and for the first time hearing the, the, the stereotype of us being terrorists applied to Palestinians specifically, my mind was actually blown because growing up, it's always we're the victims of, of, of oppression, of occupation, yeah. Yeah. because, yeah. because it, it's reality, it's objective yeah. reality that right. we are. You know, I remember being a kid and watching on TV, like there's one image that just sticks with me forever. It's an iconic image of the Palestinian struggle, it's still alive, I'm sure you guys might've seen it, but it's like a, it's a dad and his son mm -hmm. um, tucking, crouching and hiding behind, you know, a, a trash wall. cans mm -hmm. or a wall or something. And well, the, this, the, yeah. the, the sheer horror in the face of like the, the child, you know, um, just like s struck such a yeah. deep chord with me as a kid. And I remember just being there sitting, watching the news and yeah. crying as an actual child, this like is crying why at the pain and the hardship. Like it's very, very heavy. This goes, this goes back to us. We, we have this opportunity because that kid could have very well been us. Absolutely. Yeah. So we I, have a we have a we have I a responsibility he, to to give the voice to the voiceless. Absolutely. Like that. Absolutely. And I think a big this is problem the main driver for me. Yeah. A big problem, you know, especially in America. A big problem, especially in America. For us. For us, hundred percent. And a big problem in America in the past twenty years is like that perception is the only thing they saw. They they turned on the news and the only. Arab person they saw was saying Allahu Akbar and blowing right. themselves up. Right. They didn't know any Arab pe right. Arabic Post people. Post 9-11 has right? changed everything. We, we can yeah. talk about that a whole other episode, what we had to deal with. Yeah. But it's important for people to have a friend that's uh, Abdullah, a guy named Mo, right. Right. Some, someone, you know, Omar. A show on Hulu, something on Netflix. Something that you can see. The wave is happening. It's a podcast. Yeah. A friend that is Arab. Yeah, BBL. So you guys now have three new Arab friends. Right. And we are just like you guys. But our Lebanese Arab. Except our food is better. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in to the Habibi House podcast. Um, this is our time. We're going to see you guys next week or a week after that. And um, comment who you think we should bring on the show. Anybody from anywhere, who is your favorite person? We're going to bring them on and have them in the studio. And don't don't hesitate. You know, throw, throw out the wildest cards. We'll make it happen eventually. Final, final, uh, final notes? We're uh, just happy to be doing this. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. We're First finally doing it. The Habibi house has been created. Finally. Established. Finally, what the, the ideas have become, our thoughts have become things. Habibi Anulil. Habibi Anulil. Habibi. 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 Yeah, baby. Once you take the headphones off, it's like back. I'm back to reality. Just sitting with a bunch of schmucks. Bro, I thought we were really on a podcast. Literally. We really All think right. we're a podcast. We did it, boys.